kids get hurt, right? There's accidents. So we have to look at the developmental level. So if you have a child that is non-mobile, so say you've got a three-month-old baby, four-month-old baby, they can't get from point A to point B unless they're picked up and carried, right? So if they have an injury, somebody knows because they can't do it to themselves. So we're dependent on the history. If they just say there's an injury and they have no idea how it happened, it's just there, that doesn't make sense, right? Somebody knows something. Um, so a child under, say, six months that's non-mobile should have zero bruises on their body. I mean, because stuff happens sometimes with siblings and things. So there can be, but it's exceedingly rare. Once kids are school age, though, bruises are on 90% of kids at some point because they're running, they're playing, all those things. So we have to look at their developmental level. Um, and then we look, if for fractures, there are certain fractures that are common accidental fractures in a mobile child. Right, so you have to have a kid that can move in order to break a bone, pretty much. Um, so if we have we have things we call toddler fractures. So we get toddlers that'll run and trip and fall, and they'll get you know a tibia fracture or a femur fracture even. Um, but a four month old with that fracture is another story. So you really can't do anything without looking at that developmental level and the injury. And then you have to have a history that matches, right? So if I have a spiral fracture, I know it took a twisting force. You have to have a twist to have a spiral um, in the bone, a fracture. So I need a history of something that's showing me those forces. Um, and if I don't have that, then I've got to kind of worry about it. Um, if I have a buckle fracture, then it means that there's an impact on it that squished the bone. I need a history of something that's providing me that. Um, rib fractures, really uncommon in accidents. Uh, I mean, short of like bad accidents, like being run over by a car. Um, so they need to give me some history that, that gives me that amount of force on that part of the body that's going to cause that type of injury. Um, same thing with head injuries. We get kids that fall off countertops, things like that. Stuff happens. So, but I need to know, number one, could the kid the baby or the child do what the parent says they did in order to cause the injury. Is that injury consistent with that amount of force um, and the outcome on that child? So, um, you know, a, a one month old can't run up, can't roll over. So if they're telling me they rolled off something, I've got to look at that a little bit more carefully. Um, not that they can't scooch off stuff, but I need to look at it carefully. If it's a very short fall and we have a dead baby, that needs to be looked at real carefully. It's not that short falls can't kill, it's just exceedingly rare. So we have to be very careful and look at those things, um, or serious head trauma kind of things from these relatively minor incidences. Um, so it's, you know, there's no grand kind of generalities that you can say, oh, this is abuse. You have to take each case individually with that child, their medical history, their, their developmental level, um, the injuries they sustained, um, the history that's given as to what caused those injuries, put the puzzle together and see what the picture is.